why God is marching on, the truth is marching on, the word of God is marching on, kingdoms come, kingdoms go, and the kingdom of Christ keeps marching on. One day Christ will literally roll out right on this earth for a thousand years. <clears throat> of course, uh, we're waiting on that and the rapture of the church. And so welcome to a, uh, <clears throat> this is uh, a word for the word broadcast. Uh, but I'm doing a uh, a special Mother's Day pre or a post <laughs> Mother's Day message this morning for uh, all of the mothers uh, out there. Uh, I know I was scrolling down through Facebook and saw uh, all the uh, family uh, <coughs> outings and stuff. And blessing mothers, I want to send out a special blessing to mine. And, uh, and uh, my wife, uh, beautiful praying mother and mother. So, so I was pretty feeling pretty rough yesterday. And, uh, wasn't able to go to church and do my broadcast. So, I'm under a lot of pain pills, I'm going to the dentist today. So, I worked Saturday night about five. I don't know, it was about. 5 30 in the morning one of my uh, crowns fell out of my mouth thank god i caught it and uh as you i guess the cement the dentist used over the years wore out and then of course you know the rest is history sunday was uh under a lot of uh pain uh, relief pills and stuff of that and i basically slept 21 hours of 24 I was only awake for three days, <laughs> three hours Sunday. So I'm, I'm awake now at four, at five o'clock in the morning. So I figured I'd come on and do this broadcast. So let's go to First Samuel chapter one. Hallelujah, sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. Feel the Holy Ghost. So appreciate the prayers. Several people, my wife posted something on there about me not being able to do the, the special Mother's Day message yesterday morning. So a lot of folks that watch me and support me are asleep. They'll see this after I'm uh, uh, gone throughout the day. I've got to go to get my uh, tooth fixed this morning. And uh, so don't know the time yet. And uh, so, happy Mother's Day. And I know all of you were showered with gifts, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, and mothers, and you deserve it. You know, so I want to give a special message here today entitled, uh, for this early morning broadcast, and I hope you'll share it with everybody. Um, and uh, if you watch this, share it, and encourage them to watch it, not because I'm speaking on it, but because of the the uh, content of this message the Lord led me to, and uh, I feel it will be a practical and spiritual blessing in the name of Jesus to your, to the women in your family, to the mothers and grandmothers, and also to the men to show them the importance of, you know, Jesus said, love your wife like Christ loved the church, and Christ loves his church. And so this, uh, any sermon is for the male, uh, for the mother, the grandmother, the father, the grandfather, especially this message entitled Magnificent Mothers. We're going to look at one of the most magnificent mothers in the Word of God that God recorded in his, in the Bible, the Word of God. First Samuel chapter one. And I want to start reading. In verse 1, now there was a certain man of Ramah, Bayam, Sopha, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeraham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuphah, the son of Ephraim, and he had two wives. So right off the bat, we see that polygamy was encouraged during these, uh, or allowed during these days recorded here in the Bible, the Word of God. The son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Toho, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. 
And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah. The name of the other, Peninnah. And Peninnah had children. But Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts of Shalom. Or Shiloh. So the tabernacle must have been in Shiloh. And this must have been the Passover that he went up yearly. I don't know that for sure. And the two sons of Eli. In other words, the two sons of the high priest, this Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. Uh, so, and when the, I was going to share something there, but I won't. It's for a later date. And when the time was that Elkanah offered offered his sacrifices, he gave to Peninnah his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. So the Lord had done this for a specific purpose, a particular purpose, like he does everything that God does. And uh, it was a test for Hannah's faith. And just like with all of us, it's a test for our faith. Uh, all meant to do us good, just a side note. And her adversary, notice her adversary, her adversary was the other wife that her husband was married to. Provo also provoked her sore because she had babies and Hannah did. She was in the flesh and all. She just judged by the flesh for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. So she was mocking her and making fun of her. And as he, her, their husband, did so year by year when she, Hannah, went up to the house of the Lord, so she, uh, Penana, provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. So this test was for several years. Lord have mercy. <laughs> and uh, evidently, her other, the other wife was provoking her, provoking Hannah, by telling her that she was cursed by God because she wasn't having children. And uh, this hurt uh, Hannah very much, you see, and which is obvious. Uh, and uh, the Lord allowed it to happen. So the test was not only for Hannah, but for the other wife as well, with the latter failing miserably. So Hannah passed the test, and Penea didn't. Then Elkanah, her husband, uh, then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better than you, the ten sons? So it's not that Elkanah was bad to her. He was very good to Hannah, but the other, the other wife was treating her real bad behind the husband's back. Verse 9, so Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk, in other words, the peace offering. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. So this is the first time in the word of God that the, the tabernacle is referred to as the temple. And she, Hannah, was in bitterness of soul. Have you ever been there? I have, and prayed unto the Lord. That's who we all talked to in those times, and wept sore. God bottles all our tears up in a personal bottle, according to the Word of God. So this type of praying that the Lord always hears and answers is this right here. He always answers. That is, if such is in his perfect will. Verse 11, And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts. In other words, this name here, Jehovah Sabaoth, could be translated Lord of Armies. <laughs> she's leaning business. She says Lord of Armies. <laughs> she's she's wanting something to happen, and it's about to. If you will indeed look on my, the affliction of your handmaid, and that's humility, and remember me, thank God he does, and forget not your handmaid, thank God he doesn't, but will give unto your handmaid a man child, she wanted a little boy, then will I give him unto the Lord. She was going to, wow, do you feel the spirit right there in the Holy Ghost? What a sacrifice. She said, Lord, if you give me a little boy, I'll give him back to you to serve you, Lord. Amen. All the days of his life, she said, I'm just going to give him to you for the rest of his life. So she was dedicating him as a Nazarite, even from birth and for the rest of his life. And so, uh, I'm trying to look here.
Now, for the saving of time for this special Mother's Day message, I'm going to kind of give you a commentary on the, 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 the no, I'm going to go ahead and read it. I'm going to go ahead and read it. So, she makes a prayer to the Lord, and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli, that's the priest, marked her mouth. Evidently, he was there where she was praying, and she was saw, Eli saw her. Now, Hannah, she spoke in the heart. Only her lips moved. She was saying a quiet prayer, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So, so Eli's thinking that Hannah was drunk betrays that it must have been common at that time for people to be drunk at the temple praying. And number two, the spirituality of the high priest evidently wasn't what it should have been. So he would he would have easily detect it if he'd have been walking with the Lord or in the spirit that she, the God, the spirit of this woman. He did. Verse 14, and Eli said unto her, How long will you be drunk? Put away your wife from you. This must have just stunned Hannah. And not only stunned her, but stunned her. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am I, I'm a woman of, of a sorrowful spirit, sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor drink, strong drink. But I poured out my soul before the Lord. So here we see Eli must have not had, being the high priest of the temple of Israel, he must have not had a very prayerful attitude toward the tabernacle. Verse 16, count not your handmaid for a daughter of Belial, or worthlessness. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. And listen to verse 17. Then Eli answered and said, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant you your pension or prayer that you have asked of him. <laughs> so we're going to stop right there. And I'm going to give you this special Mother's Day's message. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless every uh, mother and grandmother and great mother, grandmother on the earth. They've been such a blessing to all of us. Thank you for mothers. Thank you for mothers today. In Jesus' name, even though this message is a day late because of my infirmity yesterday, uh, since I don't have any pain this morning, I'm going to speak the message you gave me yesterday. May it go out on Facebook and be a blessing to who, whatever mothers you want to, to touch and speak to and want that, that watch. Save the sinner nearest to hell as we lift Jesus up as the Savior of the world. Reclaim those who used to serve you, the prodigal sons and daughters in the far country. And then last of all, for all of us that are saved, heading to the pretty white city, give us your grace, your mercy, your love, your power, and your wisdom. Help us to be a blessing because we've been blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. So today I want to speak on magnificent mothers. Mothers are probably the most powerful, influential force on planet Earth. I say that with all the solemn, solemnity I can come up with in my soul. They are the anchor that holds every home together. And they are the heart of the home. They are the heart of the home. Here we see Hannah, her name means literally in the Hebrew gracious, did not have an easy life. And But in the midst, I mean, she's living in a poly polygamous uh, atmosphere. Her husband has another wife. Uh, she's barren. And over in Israel, that's considered a, a bad sign from God. Uh, they're mocked, scorned, and ridiculed like her, like she was by the other wife. But she prayed. She poured out her spirit to the Lord. And God answered her prayer. She asked for a baby. She said, Lord, if you give me a baby boy, I will give you that boy. And I will raise him for God. So and God answers this woman's prayer and gives her the first prophet of the Bible. His name was Samuel. And so we see, uh, we could entitle this also, The Maximum Mother. Hannah is an example of whatever, ever, uh, and has principles in her life, uh, virtues in her life that uh, we hope that every mother will take from this message today and say, I'm going to be like Hannah, especially living in the last of the last days. We, we need 
some God fear and Holy Ghost filled women uh, and mothers and grandmothers. So number one, let me give you the five points and I'll be done. Number one, the magnificent priority that she had. She was a magnificent mother because she had magnificent a magnificent priority. She wanted children. She didn't ask God to make her the richest woman in the world. She didn't ask God to give her a, a new husband or a new family or a new start. She didn't ask her husband for riches. I mean, ask God for riches. She didn't ask the Lord for success. She asked the Lord the greatest uh, blessing that a woman can have. Give me a, a baby. She wanted children. She saw children as a blessing, uh, not a burden. And uh, children make every family wealthy and rich. So she thought and she knew that being a mother was being a successful person. And uh, so, uh, by the way, when she named the baby boy, his name was Samuel. And the name literally means in the Hebrew, ask of the Lord. So, uh, she thought that being a mother was the greatest success for a woman in life. Number two, not only did she have a magnificent priority, she had a magnificent prayer. She prayed for her children that weren't even there yet. She prayed before their conception. She prayed before they were born. She, was, she prayed for her children. We should pray for our children and our grandchildren. Uh, why? Because God answers prayer. God answers prayer. She was a mother. She was barren. She played, prayed to, for a child to be born. God gave her a child and blessed her. And that child changed the known world of her time. He was the first prophet of God in the Bible. He linked the patriarchs with the nation of Israel and with, the, uh, with Moses. Many babies changed the world in the Bible. Let me give you a few of them. Sarah was 90 years old when she gave birth to Isaac, who's one of the greatest types of Jesus in the Bible. Rachel gave birth to Joseph. He was one of the greatest type, in my opinion, the prophetical picture of Jesus in the Old Testament. Ruth gave birth, you remember her, don't you? The book of Ruth gave birth to Obed, and he was the grandfather of David. Elizabeth gave birth to John the Baptist, and he was the forerunner of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. He was also Jesus' lovely cousin. And Hannah here gave birth to Samuel, who was also a link between Moses and David, King David. So, we want children in our families and grandchildren, and uh, we know they are a blessing to us and to the world to be. So number two, she had a magnificent prayer, magnificent priority. Number two, magnificent prayer. But number three, she had a magnificent purpose. She had a magnificent purpose in asking for this, this baby. She said, Lord, I'm gonna make a vow to you. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, he's gonna be a Nazarite. We're not gonna cut his hair. We're gonna dedicate him back to you and he's gonna live at the temple and live for you his whole life. Think about that. Think about that. In other words, this child is going to be a holy child. This child is going to be separated to you, God. He's going to be surrendered to you, God. He's going to serve you, Lord. He's going to be a godly child, a teenager, a young man, and man for the glory of God. And uh, she didn't, she didn't, uh, her purpose wasn't, hey, I hope he becomes rich. I hope he becomes a success in the business world. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but that wasn't the priority or her purpose. Her priority was for him to love God and serve God, and he did. My friend, that he did. And you know, it was a wicked day that Hannah gave birth to Samuel. But God always has a remnant, no matter how dark or sinful the days are. 
Number four, look at the magnificent persistence of this lady, this woman. They were definitely dark, different, desolate days she was living in personally and publicly, and the world was in bad shape. But she kept praying, and she kept waiting till God gave her a baby. And number five, the magnificent persuasion. Her persuasion raised her son for God no matter what the cost. Her persuasion raised her son for Jesus no matter what the cost. No matter the, the sacrifices, we're going to live for God. We're going to go to church and we're going to spend time in the things of God. And it paid off. So today, we hope that, uh, that you know the Lord, that you're saved. If you're not, Jesus died for you. He rose again for you. And you need to ask Jesus in your heart to be saved today. He's the only one that can save your soul from hell. Number two, once you get saved, surrender to his will and serve him. And number three, no matter the sacrifice, he'll bless you. Just do what he tells you to do. Go where he tells you to go. Say what he tells you to say. And let God use you in these last of the last days. I hope today that if you're not saved, you'll trust Christ as your Savior. I'd hate to know anybody watched one of my broadcasts on social media or anywhere else and died and went to hell. That's what will happen if you die without Jesus. On the other hand, we are so grateful when God uses us to, to touch somebody's heart for Jesus and they get saved or rededicate their life. If you rededicate your life to the Lord or ask Jesus into your heart to be your Savior and Lord, please let us know. All right, folks, that is my Mother's Day message, a special Mother's Day message. I know hardly nobody would be up this morning. I didn't have any pain in my, from my injury that I've got inside my old mouth there until I get to the dentist today. But I had uh, felt very rough yesterday and had a rough night at work Saturday night. Thank you for all the prayers while I was at work. It got me through the night. <laughs> and that wasn't what was causing my sin. I had a I don't know what I had, a stomach virus or something, but it was, I just felt bad all night, and then my tooth fell out at about 5.15, and that added to the stress, and it was, we were undermanned, so that doubled the workload, so it was a pretty rough night, and then I got home, and I just, I hate missing church, but I would have just felt terrible at church, so I just stayed at home, basically slept. As I said earlier in the broadcast, I was only awake for three hours. I slept 21 hours. So I'm well rested. I'm ready to go get my tooth fixed this morning. It should be calling with the time here in a little while. So I hope you enjoyed this Mother's Day's message. Please share it on social media. God will bless you. Remember what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And uh, so. Uh, the Lord gave me this message, led me to it. So I hope you'll share this message with every mother and grandmother you know on social media. Ask them to sit down and watch it for 25 minutes. Whether they like my personality or what, tell them to listen to the content of the message and apply it to their life. And uh, we'll appreciate that. So hit the share button. Number two, I'll be on Instagram here in a little bit. I didn't post yesterday. I didn't do anything yesterday. Uh, sleep, take meds. Uh, so I'll be on Instagram at Clay Cordell 62 so get on Instagram and follow me there and also uh, my YouTube this broadcast here will be put on my YouTube channel we're trying to get up get up and going and the less people out there like y'all help me it'll never uh, reach people for Jesus like I, my prayer is so make sure you subscribe to my channel on YouTube, you just get to it by typing my name in, Clay Cordell, and you can watch this broadcast and other broadcasts my wife put us on there once a week. Also, I just remembered, thank you, Lord. Uh, well, no, let's see here. Let me see if I'm supposed to do this. This is, I said earlier in this broadcast, this was a word for the word broadcast. Well, it's really the Hope in the Lord broadcast, which airs once a week on Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on social media on Facebook. This is that broadcast. It's just after I got it this morning and felt a little bit better. But let me give you, uh, I've been giving some uh, practical 
uh, principles on how to have an effective prayer life. We've been doing it for five weeks, six weeks. Here's another one. Seven reasons why you should pray and trust God. One of them is he will fight for you. Exodus 14, 14, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So just hold your peace and let God do your fight. That's what Hannah did. She prayed to Jehovah in this text that I read. And that name in Hebrew literally means the Lord of armies. Let God do your battle for you. Pray to him. Put it in his hands. And then also focus on praise when you pray. When Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, his first focus was on entering the presence of God with praise. He drew attention to the name of God. So today, begin praising God aloud for being your Jehovah Jireh, who is your provider, Jehovah Shalom, who is your peace, Jehovah Rapha, who is your healer, Jehovah Nissa, who is your banner, Jehovah Roha, he is your shepherd, and Jehovah Tid Sidkenu, he is your righteousness. And the verse is Matthew 6, 9, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So, all right, praise the Lord. Uh, so to uh, always on the Hope in the Lord broadcast, many of you will watch. Y'all, most of you are asleep right there or getting up and going to work. Uh, I only ask for offerings on this broadcast. I may, I, I may ask twice today because I didn't have anybody to watch last night because I didn't show it. But if you would like to be a financial blessing to my wife and I, some of you, Bless us personally by giving us uh, sowing uh, gifts into our life to help us. Uh, here's the addresses, or if you decide to sow into the outreach side to help us purchase worship music and also buy books and commentaries to support this broadcast. Everything you learn, I learn from somebody else. So if we are a blessing to you out there on social media. Uh, here's the ways that you can be a financial blessing to our broadcast and to us personally if you choose to do that. Number one, you can do it through Facebook Pay. How do you get to Facebook Pay? Some of you use that. We've never had any problems with it. It's a secure line set on Facebook. You go through your go to Messenger, go through your profile pic, go down to Facebook Pay, follow the simple steps, and send your offering. It'll come straight to us because we've already set up an account through them. And we'll get a notification, and I will send you a personal prayer and thank you note as soon as we get the notification that you sent your offering. Number two, you can send it through our P.O. box. Our P.O. box is pound sign or hashtag 211-3740, Boiling Springs Highway, Boiling Springs, South Carolina, 29316. That's pound sign, hashtag 211-3740, Boiling Springs Highway, Bowling Springs, South Carolina, 29316, or you can send it to another address, 119 Terry, T E R R Y Avenue, A V E period, Inman, I N M A N, South Carolina, 29349. That's 119 Terry, T E R R Y Avenue, A V E period, Inman, I N M A N, South Carolina, 29349. And so all of you that do give to us, support us financially through our outreach side of the ministry or our personal personal uh, side of the uh, we thank you. Uh, I know God's already going to bless you or already has blessed you. So we hope that uh, just do what God tells you to do. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> I do it every Lord's Day. Yesterday when I wasn't able to go to church because of how bad I felt, I sent my tithe and offering to the Lord. I do it all the time. Uh, we tithe on everything that's given to us through our uh, our love gifts that people give us through, through our outreach. And also, everything that's given to the outreach side, we pay a tithe to missions on Wednesday night. So, say somebody gives us $500, which someone has before, for our outreach. God gives 50 of it right off the top, no questions asked. And that money's given to missions. If someone gives us an offering to the personal side of our life, my wife and I, because we're a blessing to you as we teach the Word of God, then we pay a tithe on my work tithe and her her little tithe that she on her little income she gets. And so that's how it works, folks. So there you go.
All right, I'll be back on here sometime this morning. It's according to what time the dentist. If the dentist calls early this morning, I'm out of here to get this tooth fixed. Um, so we'll just have to see. Just cut your notifications on. It'll let you know. I can't even drink. I got a drink out of one side of the mouth. Tough. It was tough yesterday. Uh, but uh, all right, folks. Hope you enjoyed my special Mother's Day message. Happy Mother's Day uh, to all the mothers, grandmothers, great grandmothers, and some people out there are great, great, great grandmothers. So we hope all of you had a wonderful day yesterday. And we'll see you sometime this morning. Uh, and definitely tonight. I will be back on here, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Uh, with a special sermon uh, on the names of Jesus in the Bible. We've been preaching a series of sermons on that. So I'm out of here. See you after a while. God bless.